my channel. Check it out with Carmela T. Thank you so much for jumping on board. So, I am having a cup of coffee much deserved <laughs> because I've been working on the past week. You know, I always think it's going to take a couple of hours or a day or even two days. And uh, the creative process is what takes time. Now, if you do want to whip through something and sew it really quickly, you certainly can. You can get through it quickly, but if you're going to let your creative process take over and decide to do this or that or, you know, play with it a little bit, that takes time. So um, I want to show you first, before we go into the, the blanket, um, some uh, just two, two pieces of my artwork. This is um, a great white heron or egret, you might say, that I drew right after I had seen a whole colony of them. And up here in Vermont, you don't see them like that. So um, I took it really as a blessing. And um, I came home and drew this. So I just, I, the reason I'm showing you a couple pieces of my artwork is because the, there are certain components that stay with us in our artwork as we go along. This is a second piece. This is um, an abstract piece. Actually, sorry. <laughs> Actually, this piece, where did I sign it? I signed it over here. I signed it here. So this is uh, this way. So um, this is abstract. This is an acrylic. But the reason I'm showing you this is that certain components of who we are is reflected in our artwork really no matter what method we're using or what we're doing. Because it's a feeling, it's a thought, it's an attitude, it's a spiritual uh, feeling or um, sense of how we look at life that we're trying to communicate. It's the subconscious trying to communicate. So I think it's beautiful. And it's whether it's abstract or, um, or you're following a pattern. It's what you're choosing to do. So really this, I just wanna talk about the, um, the pattern on, on this a little bit and how it reflects pretty much of uh, what I love. So I picked, and I didn't do this on purpose, I picked all flowers. I didn't realize I was going to pick all flowers. Now, I did feel like I wanted um, silky pieces, easy pieces that, um, that might even be sh sheer enough to uh, pick up the pink because I was loving the, um, the pink and I did give it a backing and the backing is, I, I kept telling you it was good. This is another thing. You say one thing and you do another. I was going to fold the backing over like the Kwandi method. I was going to fold it over and that's a Boro method too. I didn't, I didn't. I folded it underneath itself. So it was fold to fold, and then I stitched it around, and that's how I ended up doing it. So it has a nice backing, um, and that is silky. This whole thing is silky. I didn't weigh it, but I'm going to, so you'll see it in the following clip here. I will tell you how much it weighs. It doesn't weigh much. This is very silky, and... Um, so I've got blue flowers, I have purple flowers, I have roses, and as I was doing the sashiko over here, I got the feeling of a lattice, you know, that you see in a rose garden. And my grandmother used to have one in her rose garden. So I, I started to have that memory as I was stitching the sashiko stitches. And over here, the, the, I got the feeling, I just wanted to um, do a triangle. And as I did the triangle, I got the feeling of mountains. And so I just kept doing those. 
And as I was doing the mountains, and this is literally how this was happening, I went up here and I wanted to make birds. So the birds were flying and there's two silhouettes there of birds. And I show you in the following clip how I did it. And it's freehand. So it's, it's freehand. So, um, uh, I wanted to share that with you and right smack in the middle why I put the heart there I'm not sure but this heart is just saying that this is a piece that reflects life and things that I love the life is seen in the flowers that are alive you know flowers around us in nature are alive so these represent life and beauty and they're so sensitive flowers are so sensitive but they're so strong so again that's our heart it's a metaphor for our heart and you know I just go on and on with the reflections as I made this of course it took me a week so I definitely had time to reflect and when you're doing the sashiko stitching there is time to reflect and I want to show you this. I'm going to put this down a little bit. And um, the hem here, which I love, I love, love, love that this is not even. Now, I have done, I have manipulated um, wool, wet wool when I, I did um, felting of wet wool. I used to manipulate that before it dried. So I knew this was going to come up like that, and I love it. I love it, love it. And, um, and then so it kind of goes down. Now, at the top, it just gives me a feel really of um, humbleness, of, you know, it, it is worked by hand and whatnot. Now, up here, the, I can't even reach that. But up, up at the, as you know, the border is crochet and lacy. So I, I left that border on there. But look, it's, that's nice and straight. So if you, and this, and this fits, I had put it on uh, my bed to see how it fits. You know, it fits perfectly on a twin. Um, this is cut out from a queen size, but, um, it's cut in four, so so it fits perfectly, you know, it's kind of like a throw or a wall piece. I'm loving this as a wall piece, I'm going to tell you. I mean, granted, your eyes are going around and this and that, but this definitely gives you something to look at. And it's soft and it's flowy and it's uh, different. So anyway, so the methods used here, Sashiko stitching, the visible stitching, um, the borrow building with very large pieces. Again, shibori manipulation of the pieces. This is shibori manipulation. So that's a technique that I used in this. And then, of course, you have a traditional heart. So, you know, that's how I mixed it up a little bit. But, um... You know, I don't, as you know, um, oh, and you know, the other thing is, seriously, when you look at Sashiko stitching, many times you will see, uh, well, you'll see it like this one over here. Um, you can't really see that. That's a piece I did. Well, you can kind of see it. You can see where the stitches are all, they're stitch constant stitching so that's the other thing I did different here I didn't do constant stitchings but um, the other thing I want to say about doing a piece like this or doing a project like this is it brings you to such a good place mentally and emotionally and spiritually you know that we're living in a world that's really tough right now a lot of stress people say things they, they act so stressed, I mean, even at the grocery store. But if you can get to a place that's your safe place and your joyful place and create and just enjoy it as you're going along, um, 
And that, that's very much what I did here. I created this as I was going along. Um, you can't really see the birds here. I am taking, I took a, I took a close up of those birds. There's just a silhouette um, of the birds. So, um, but I just wanted to uh, share that. Now the following is some detail and clips and a couple, and I stop right smack in the middle of, of making it and I talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing, about what I'm gonna do here. So I hope you enjoy it and I thank you so much for joining me. And uh, please, please, uh, any questions, any projects you want me to do, you know, I'm gonna tell you the next project I am seriously contemplating right now, anyway, is a mandala. So a round um, circle, um, wall piece, or, you know, maybe throw it on your bed or couch. You know, and where to sell these, um, I don't know. I'm selling my pouches and bracelets up the street um, in little stores, a couple of stores. And um, that's working out really great. But where to sell a piece like this, I'm not sure. I may put it on grailed.com. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. <laughs> anyway, please enjoy the following and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, welcome to Check It Out with Carmela T. So, now I am focusing on an awesome art project, Boro Sashiko, Boro Building, influenced Boro Building and Sashiko Stitching um, to ha have you come along with me on it. It's gonna be extensive. But what, um, and, I, and I want to share with you, before we go too much farther, <laughs> how I get my fabrics. I'm gonna put this down so you can see. Look at this bin. This is one, one bin. I have two like this. And um, these, I'm gonna show you some uh, fabrics, or I'm sorry, not fabrics, uh, clothes that were on uh, Macari <laughs> and now are going to be in a blanket. But uh, these are for me to choose from. Now the reasons, I'm not relisting them is they didn't go for reasons you know the design maybe it's a little worn like this one is a little worn under the underarm a tiny bit you know it's it's noticeable in the photo maybe somebody didn't want that that's okay so it has a life a new life coming about this one very recently you might remember I was showing it and uh, feeling this pilling, and I'm not crazy about that. So I don't, I don't think this should be sold for, you know, money. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do is use uh, parts of this fabric uh, for scrap, you know, scrap fabrics to make my blankets, and um, that are not pilled, that aren't lifting. This one never even got to the video. I'm just showing you a few here and giving you the reasons. This is a perfectly beautiful, and yes, Michael Kors. But Michael, nobody's gonna wear this shirt. Now this shirt, you can't probably see it, but it actually has stains. And I took it and I washed it. I washed it three times. And the st it must be mustard. <laughs> Because it's coming from down there. It's coming down and you can't really see it. But if you bought the shirt and you put the shirt on and the sun shone on it, you see it. So this isn't going anywhere. And it's unfortunate. It's a Michael Kors. So this will be going some beautiful fabric into uh, a blanket that I'm going to make. This is a beautiful dress. Now I have a couple of really gorgeous dresses that did not make it even on posting and i'm going to tell you why if a dress uh in here i'm going to show you two more just like that this is another one i almost posted it and then i realized something what happens many times unfortunately is you get a dress that's gorgeous like this and with wear 
if it has a lining where the fiber is really different from the shell, what happens is this might contract, it might shrink, um, and this is what has happened. So what happens truly is the dress itself, the construction, the construct, if you will, twists. And you put this dress on and you're miserable. <laughs> You're not happy wearing a dress like this. So I'm, I'm going to work with the shell of it. And, um, and that's going to be part of a blanket. So I happen to know, I'm a fiber artist, so I know how fibers work. And this is the same situation. Look at how gorgeous this dress is. Okay, this, this was a uh, Talbot's. But look, look at look at how gorgeous this dress. So, it's the same thing. You can't you can't wear this dress. This this has uh, twisted. It has twisted. Maybe it didn't have enough leeway. I don't know what happened. But uh, the fact is, if you put a dress on like this, you're going to be miserable. You're going to have the um, inner part of it hugging your body like this so the seams are gonna be <laughs> half going around you're not gonna like that so this is this is these are the reasons this I'm just giving you a few reasons a uh, few reasons why these uh, clothes end up in in my bin and uh, so what I have come up with and because I was going through this previous previous to the video. This sheet is uh, four times, oh, sorry. I have to undo this one, no, yeah. This sheet, if I hold the sheet up like this, this is um, almost, it's about 48 inches, so it's a, yeah. This is about, I would say four feet. This is about four feet all around. So it's like a four feet, four feet. Oh, maybe this is six. Yeah, four, six, four by six. So, and this is folded a few times. This is a beautiful sheet. And it has this embroidery here. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is taking the Boro method of building, but fabricating it a little bit so that I am building with the saris. So I'm not doing a cantha. I'm not doing cantha method where, see this would be cantha if you take the sari, if I'm saying that correctly. I never say that correctly. But you take, you take like four, oh, this is cut here, but take like four of these, you know, and you fold them over. It's a lovely way to make a blanket and then you take another one and you put that up against against it the, typically what you're going to have is layers of this beautiful silky sari and then you do a very large what we call traditional uh, uh, hand stitching long stitches but you do the, um, they're visible stitching, so they are sashiko. Um, and, you know, you do them along the border, and then you, you space it a bit. This is cantha method. And then you stitch, space it a bit, stitch. Beautiful way. I am going to do some, some quilts with you like that. But what I'm doing actually with, with this is I want to take larger blocks of fabrics. And I want to over, I want to use this as my, my base. I want to use it as my base because I don't, I don't really have enough denim to piece together for my base. And um, this is kind of cottony and that's perfect. So I want to, and then I'm going to take one, one piece, let's say, of material. I'm going to cut it. I will cut it. 
and then I'm going to place it on my sheet. This is, I am going to have a different view for you when we start this, and I'm going to place it on my sheet, and then I'm going to sew it sashiko style, okay? And then I'm going to take another piece, large, I'm talking large pieces. This isn't traditional hand quilting because we're using sashiko and we're overlapping. When you overlap, it makes everything heavier, it gives it more volume, it reinforces the fabrics. And, um, you know, someone was asking me about batting, and I'm going to do a whole video on that because truly, if you use an envelope style, let's say, um, when you're making a Boro quilt, technically, your base, of course, that you are sewing everything onto is truly already your batting because the backing the envelope style you're going to have your backing that's going to be the the outside piece and it will be cut it does cover up the sashiko the visible stitching but um we're, i'm going to do a whole video on that but first i i have this um inspiration calling me to make um, like four of these. I wanna do four of these and they're gonna be large. So, you know, the idea is they should take not, you know, a hyper extensive amount of time. They're gonna take, it's gonna be a nice project. But, and I wanna see what the timing of the project is. But with the way I do it, I kinda of like a little turtle because I stop and I go and I stop and I go. But I'd kind of like to uh, bring you with me through this. So this video is part one with, um, if you want to come along with me, get a sheet that's kind of cottony would be best. Pick the size you want. It can be any size. And if you want, then start going through your bin and start picking out, look at this, seriously? When I hold these clothes up, I have a hard time selling clothes sometimes because I want them in my bin. But um, these I've already used. But look at that. I mean, you can see how beautiful that quilt is already. So I'm going to start cutting out my big blocks and then I'm going to come back and um, I will show you those. So, you know, we're going to work on this over time together. And um, my blocks are probably going to be 12 by 12. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Are they all going to be 12 by 12? No, because they're going to be in that range. Because Boro Influence Building, the Boro Building, the fabrics are all different sizes. It's just like Kwandi, except Kwandi going around the border. You're going around the border until you and you're heading towards the center and you know you're you're building with all different uh fi all different fibers all different colors all different designs boro building usually yes they're focusing on cotton or linens but you can mix it up <laughs> that's what it's about so um i'm gonna have you know long uh, you know, rectangles, squares, um, probably no hexagons or circles. I do want to go there though, but um, that's that's kind of a geo, geo messing around. So I'm going to, because I love the Boro method, so I'm going to stay with the squares, different size squares and whatnot, but they're going to be larger. Everything's going to be larger. And I'm basing it on that 12 by 12 inch. Anyway, I hope that helps and I hope you're going to join me. Thank you.
everyone. I figured I'd finish my coffee break with you. I've been working on the Boro Sashiko influenced blanket for all day today. And um, it's really not taking as long as I thought. But, you know, between um, picking out fabrics, laying it out, pinning it, and deciding what I'm going to go with, it takes time. Now, the having said that, you know, the concept really of the Boro and the... Um, and the Kwandi, both of those methods, they pick the fabrics as they're going along, and it's a very soul-fulfilling process because it's you're not manipulating anything. So, you know, in this blanket, there is a little manipulation <laughs> because, and that's why I call it mixing it up a little bit, and I'm gonna show you why. First, I'm gonna show you what I used. So, I used a queen-size silk sheet. I cut it in four. So it's measuring about 44 by 50. And the top two of them, the top border is um, crocheted lace. And I totally left that on. There's, It's gorgeous. So um, I'm going to show you the blanket that I'm working on. But uh, silk or cotton, um, you know, really even flannel, easy, easy fabrics to stitch through and with a long, thin needle. Um, and you need an eye. There are special needles that you can order that have large eyes and they're very long and they're very sharp and they're sashiko needles. Um, but this is cotton thread and this is what I'm using primarily so far. I have other cotton threads uh, this is beige, but I have black, red, violet, and you know what? I got them all at the thrift shop. So I'm using this, and I am also using regular sewing thread, and I'm going to show you the pieces that I decided to improvise a little bit because I do, I am manipulating it a little bit, to tell you the truth. Um, and uh, just because when I'm looking at it, my visual and my feeling, I'm kind of going along with that. So this is what, and, um, and of course, these are all my, my needles. Now, the, this is the piece I'm going to show you. And here's the, and this is right smack in the middle of the process. And... It's so you're gonna see, I'm gonna stand up in a moment, but you're gonna see, of course it's not complete, but you'll see the concept I went with was thin fabrics. And I was staying really with um, soft blues. And of course, I want a little contrast in there. This piece is not sewn, so you're not able to really see how it is yet. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. These pieces are large. Now, the reason they're large is I didn't want to go with the traditional Boro small pieces. I wanted to play around with larger pieces. However, something that's close to my heart is the history of Boro. And the history is that the farmers were very poor. The, fa the fa fibers of their own coats and clothing became distressed. So they had to go get fibers, you know, more clothing, secondhand clothing to mend what they had and reinforce it. So the distressed look is very close to my heart. It really brings me to thinking of people struggling. And here, this piece, I don't know if you can see it really well. I took some pictures of this because I wanted to show you. This is distressed. This is a very thin, thin fiber. This is silk. So I used, and I'm going to reinforce this again, I used the whip stitch. Um, and as I was going around, around it, I was catching it a little bit and folding it in so it had a little bit of a hem. 
So I wasn't using the whip stitch necessarily on raw ended uh, edges. So, um, and if you have sewn those, you would know that they would pull out anyway. They, they, it wouldn't work because this is very, very thin fiber. You need a, I used a very small, thin needle and I used regular sewing thread. But I wanted to um, get the feel of the distressed look. So this is not done. I have to sew this all, all the way down. And there's another piece that I want to emphasize in here. And this is, and you'll see it, you're gonna see it beautifully at the end. But this is the heart. And I want the heart to have a distressed look a little bit. There's, and these edges, so you know, right here, it, you may not be able to tell, but I did manipulate these fibers right here. When you see the photos, you're going to see that it was a perfect corner. It was perfectly square. And when I was sewing, and hopefully I captured that for you, I showed how I just manipulated with the needle. I just pulled it down and folded it, folded it. And I'm going to reinforce this all with stitching. But I love that look. And it was right at the heart the base of the heart. So um, I wanted that metaphor in the fiber to come out. And um, I think it's coming, I think it will show. So now you see my Sashiko stitching all around and that's what I'm doing. I mean, you know, I started with the border. So you, you know, you lay your pieces down and you, and you, you sew them on. Now in the Kawandi method, I'm just gonna show you something. I I went all the way around and I folded these and I'm like why am I folding those I'm folding them because I'm using very thin fibers I did not want to have to whip stitch the edges so I folded it over that's why I folded it over and I did it all the way down okay so there there are different methods of um, doing a border this is not actually a finished border yet. Um, I believe what I'm going to do is place a backing to this and then actually fold it over. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm also thinking maybe I put a few pieces on the back here for um, just decoration, seriously. Um, because, you know, you have, uh, Technically, you have two layers. Once you lay your fibers or your pieces, I'm sorry, on the front, that's considered, that's a layer. Then what you're laying it onto is your second layer. Um, or um, it could be considered batting. In Boro, in my Boro pouches that I make, um, I have three layers. I have my top layer, of all the pieces that I've placed. I have the second layer, which is the denim, and then I have the third layer, which is the backing. So, um, you know, I, I plan to put a backing on this. However, I wanna play around and see uh, what else I can do, um, how that, what that backing might look like. Because see, you have some stitching there and um, and that's fine. I mean, you know, with the Sashiko stitching, um, a lot of times they won't show you the, the back and you see the stitches. But um, what I want to do is get a backing to this. So the Sashiko stitching you're seeing is going to be in the front. And um, now this is the other thing I want to point out to you is when I did the Boro building, I laid these pieces out. I overlapped this and you know typically I might overlap the next one. I didn't. I took this one and overlapped that one. And um, when you go with the boro you're kind of just you know overlapping. You got to make sure you're overlapping at least an eighth of an inch because when you're stitching you want everything to stay in place. So you don't want to put them edge to edge. If you do, I mean, certainly you can. You can do a design and do it that way. Um, but, and you know, with the Kawandi, 
you're building, and the next one I do actually is going to be a Kwandi method because I want to show you if you haven't already seen, but you can build it, you build it from uh, the outer border and picking your pieces and you're going more and more to the center. But you do the outer border and then you add the batting. Okay, that's the Kwandi. That's the Kwandi method. The Kantha method, we're going to do one like that too. Those are all folded in pretty much together, so you don't worry about batting there. The Boro method, as I said, those three layers, that center layer becomes your batting, if, if you will. Um, that's a, for lack of a better way to explain it. Um, so anyway, let's, let's get finished and, um, I will show you, I'm going to show you stitching as, as I go along this afternoon and finish this up. Uh, you know, I have this bird um, going kind of uh, directed towards the right, and now I'm going to make one kind of kind of directed towards the left. So, um, and this is freehand, but these are super simple um, silhouette type. So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to like I'm drawing. Like I am drawing, I can't say that word right unless I use a, my Italian accent, um, but it's as though I am drawing the bird and with the needle and the thread, and that's how I'm doing it. So, Sashiko, Sashiko, visible stitching, and so here I have... Now I want to bring it down because I want to emphasize and I want to bring it, actually I'm going to bring it over here because I want to make, I want to make sure I'm making it long. I want to make the wingspan long and because then it can be up to your imagination if it's a seagull or if it's an eagle. <laughs> I didn't really even mean for that to rhyme, but it does rhyme. So... I'm going to bring this down one more notch and then I'm going to turn it up because I want to go up and I want to start the next wing and I'm going to bring this wing like that so uh, basically around like that so that's how I'm doing that now you know if you don't want to do it freehand uh, do that you can um, certainly uh, draw on the fabric with um, there's some safe safe drawing pens just for fabric or you can um, draw it on a piece of paper you know and trace it I mean there's lots of things lots of ways that you can do this and um, I do freehand because I do everything freehand. And, okay, so see, that's very nice. And now I'm going to bring that wing down a little bit here with the thread. I'm going to bring that down, my Sashiko stitching. Kind of hard to show when I'm right smack in the middle of producing or working. And now what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, I probably can't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth a few times here to emphasize this bird. 
and this bird I already did that and I may do it again I did three times here three I don't know if you can see but anyway uh, there we go Everyone, um, this is I kind of stopped right smack in the middle or you know we're getting to the end of it but there's still work to be done but I just want to share with you some of the things that I'm doing as I go along and um, just letting creativity take its course because we are several days in on this project but it's beautiful it's coming out beautiful and um, one of the things I wanted to share with you I don't know if I can get a good picture. If I can't, I'll get it towards the end. But I decided to kind of do triangles as I was going along. This is such a beautiful pattern, this purple flowers and whatnot. It just made me kind of want to start drawing. And um, I am an artist. I do draw. So I was thinking of putting some great blue herons on here too. But I'm just focusing on the mountains right now or triangles and um, getting those done. And over here, um, this, this material, the fabric, is, I'm going to put this down a little bit. You can see it's kind of lifted. And that is what I wanted. Because if you remember, up here, right near the heart, in the last clip, I was manipulating the fabric in uh, creating a shibori effect. And the shibori effect is when um, you take, uh, the, the process is an ancient process of uh, really with wet wool or wet silks and they put like pebbles, they, they'll tie pebbles into the fabric when it's wet. They'll let it dry and the impression of the pebble has memorized into the fabric. That's shibori, uh, and you see it here, actually. This is shibori. They folded this one that was wet. They tied it, and that's the effect that they got. That's shibori. So what I'm doing is a shibori effect, so to speak, with a sewing needle. So that's what I'm doing here, and that's what I did here, and that's what I'm gonna, go, going to emphasize down here because I love the billowing effect. I love the, 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 fi the fabric raising up a little bit. I think that's beautiful and I'm purposely doing that. So that's where I'm at here. And um, so I'm gonna continue to move along and, um, and we should, I should be just about done in the next clip and uh, show you if um, I'm going to do a backing uh, someone asked me this morning if I could have this be a wall piece. So um, I'm considering that. I start. It could be a wall piece or it could be a blanket. But if I put a backing on it, it's definitely a blanket. Um, it could be a wall piece at, um, with a backing on it too. Anyway, there we are. So we're going to continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm.